Greetings everyone, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfill. Welcome to the channel and welcome to today's coverage of the Patch 7 by Larian Studios for Baldur's Gate 3. Specifically, I want to talk about the decision to push the release back to 2023 along with some of the really cool stuff that's in Patch 7. Um, I have not personally played since I think it was Patch 4 when they introduced the Druid. I have been holding back so that I don't spoil a lot of stuff for me, but I have a feeling it might be about time for me to dive back in and have another taste. Another little nibble at what Baldur's Gate 3 has to offer. But before we dive into today's video, I'd love to take this moment to say, hey, if you're a new person here, hopefully you like this video. And if you do so, do so you'll smash that like button and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, all those good things so that you can get more of this type of content. I do a lot of different things here on YouTube. I stream some games, I play some games, I talk about books, I read books, I do shows, I review shows. All those things happen here. It is a variety channel. Check out the playlists. We also have a Discord down below and a gaming community who are currently playing The Lord of the Rings online together on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturday evenings Central Time. So if all that sounds fun to you, make sure you check out the Discord down below as well. Without further ado, let's dive in. And today I'm choosing to go with Rock, Paper, Shotgun as the place where I was getting my information. There's lots of different sources that I use, but this one in particular, I loved their coverage and what they had to say about things. So let's dive in right away. Um, first and foremost, um, I, I went into the early access for Baldur's Gate knowing full well what I was getting into. They were very clear up front that the early access was going to be at least a year in length, probably more, and that it wasn't anticipated that the game was going to be out until sometime in maybe 2022. I knew that full well. So I'm not upset by them pushing the launch date back. I am applauding the decision and I'm all for it. If, and here's the big if, they have the budget and the leverage to do so. Um, this is talking about, this article is talking about the fact that, yeah, they've always been a little vague on when the game will leave early access. At one point, they had suggested 2021, maybe, then they said probably 2022, and now it says that they're expecting 2023. The quote that was given in this article is that our internal goal post for release is a quality bar rather than a date. A ton of progress has been made towards that quality bow over the past year in early access, but we know many players are waiting for an actual date. That date will come when we're even closer to meeting our goal, but right now our expectation is that Baldur's Gate 3 will be released out of early access in 2023. And the article goes on to talk about, hey, you know, when this if they've got the if they've got the budget to go for as long as it needs to, cool better a good game later than a so so game sooner. This is so important because way too many games get pushed out of early access um, way too early and they're bug world of messes or they don't have enough content and then all people do is bitch and moan. That's it. And then the game is ruined because it's really hard to come back from a crappy launch. So I'm all for this. If they actually have the money, and I think they do, um, then they can take it until it's completed. Here's something that a lot of people I think may not know or may have forgotten. I don't know the actual timeline I want to say it was after Divinity Original Sin, but before the second game was when Larian pitched Wizards of the Coast on making a D&D game and they were shot down. They were told, nope, you're not big enough. You don't have enough experience. We can't trust you with the responsibility of doing a Dungeons and Dragons licensed game. And then after the success of Divinity Original Sin 2 was when they were able to go back to them and say, what do you think now? And that's when the agreement was made to, well, okay, yeah, you guys have obviously matured enough, you've done your own thing, you've made it successful enough that we think you are trustworthy enough and capable of handling the responsibility of doing Baldur's Gate 3, which is a massive undertaking given the prestige associated with the first two games. And I think that to date, Larian Studios has proven that they are more than capable of carrying that weight and handling that responsibility because they have in my mind, done incredible things. They've opened up multiple studios around the creation of Baldur's Gate 3, so it's not just one location. They have multiple locations working on the game. Um, and if you haven't played Early Access yet, um, it's pretty amazeballs. Like, I haven't played since the fourth one, which is when they dropped the Druid. So when the game first came out, and I know the Nathan Napalm has played way more than I have even, um, I'm up around the 100 hours category, and he's like, double that I think 
Um, I played when it first came out. I played a rogue, and I remember um, when it first came out, they were all like, "Yeah, there's about 20 hours of gameplay in this base experience that they were launching when early access first dropped," which it says here was October 2020. I don't remember back that far, um, but it dropped, and I got my first run through was about 52 hours, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> They said 20, 25 hours, and I got double that because I was like every nook and cranny. I'm doing all this other stuff. Then I turned around and did a Ranger, and I did a more streamlined run that only took about 20, 25 hours. And then I just didn't touch it again. I was like, that's enough. I don't I don't need to do more run-throughs with the characters that I have. I've kind of seen everything I want to see for now. And I didn't play it at all until they dropped the Druid class. Then I ran through the Druid, and I did a very streamlined, you know, sort of the 20 hours-ish kind of thing. Um, and, and finish the Druid, and then I haven't touched it since then, because I'm trying really hard not to spoil the storyline for myself, even though I do have access to early access. That sounds funny to say that. I have access to early access. Um, if you haven't gotten early access and you want to get in, it's worth it. Like, even right now, paying what they're charging, um, which I think is going to vary depending on where you buy it, um, it's so worth it, because you're going to get, in my mind, you're going to get at least, at least... 60 hours of entertainment out of this if you do a couple of run-throughs it's worth it even now um so for me i'm not worried i don't care how long it takes i have faith that they're going to pull it off because what they've shown so far is nothing but amazeballs which gets into the new barbarian class now i haven't played this i don't anticipate diving in and playing this so my reaction here is not that of a hands-on player but just having watched the live stream and seen some other people and then reading through this article i thought this was a really good article to cover things which is why i wanted to include it again the links to this are down in the description of the youtube video but um the key takeaway here is that they introduced the barbarian class now and um, they're talking a little bit how the most famous ranger of Baldur's Gate, excuse me, the most famous barbarian of Baldur's Gate wasn't actually a barbarian at all. Technically speaking, anyways, Minsk was just a ranger, a man of the woods who just happened to spin into a rage during battle, hitting friend or foe for extra damage while ignoring blows that would fell a tree. It was a classification that came with benefits, since every ranger was entitled to an animal companion. Minsk had justification for his connection to Boo, the miniature giant space hamster that lived in his inventory, but the primary reason for the misnomer was a gap in the rules of Dungeons and Dragons. Second edition didn't have the Barbarian class, remembers lead designer James Olin. Baldur's Gate 2 used third edition classes, but by then it was too late. Larian Studios, the custodian of the current game, doesn't have any such issues because they're working with D&D's 5th edition, which has Barbarians. Now, what's really cool here, if you've watched, this is... Uh, I think we've talked about this on the Looking for More show. Um, if you've not watched that show, we're live every Thursday at 5 p.m. Central on Simurg's Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Simurg, with Simurg, myself, and the Nathan Napalm. We have talked a lot about this game on that show, especially Nathan and I. And one of the things we love about what Larian Studios is doing with Baldur's Gate 3 is they are really tapping into some really cool mechanics that allow you to sort of transcend traditional games and have an environment where you can do so many cool tabletop things like for example pick up a goblin NPC and wield him as a weapon oh and then I want to throw him at the enemy, but I'm not quite strong enough, so I'm going to drink a potion of giant strength. Then I'm going to throw this creature, and I'm going to squash the enemy and kill it with this goblin NPC. So we've previously seen in, in, in other videos, you know, picking up, you know, taking a boot out of your inventory and throwing it at an enemy and doing like 1d6 of damage, like... There's so many cool things you can do in this game, um, which this is the one of the things that they talk about here in the article was like, um, no matter though, Vent commands the Barbarian to down a potion hill giant strength. This is Baldur's Gate. This is the cool thing. This is the Baldur's Gate 3 design philosophy. No system exists in a vacuum. Instead, everything is open to the influences of whatever tool you might have rattling around in your backpack. With newly bulging muscles, the barbarian hurls the hapless goblin, which lands atop the spider, flattening it. 
this is amazing. Like, this is one of the cool things about playing tabletop. If you've watched us or anybody else, like we play on Sunday nights on twitch.tv forward slash weave and void Sundays at 9 p.m. Central with our group. If you've ever watched us or another group playing D&D, one of the coolest parts about tabletop games and playing um, like D&D is improv improvisation is like somebody in the character saying, I'm going to like... Here's a recent one from one of our adventures. Uh, we were going up against a green dragon in the Lost Mine of Fandelver campaign. The party really had no way to do anything, but we had a potion of flying in our inventory. So the dwarf rogue in our party drank the potion of flying, jumped up into the air with a cask of oil, chucked the cask of oil down on top of the dragon, covering the dragon in oil. Then our warrior did a berserker charge towards the dragon with a lit torch in his hand, jumped at the dragon, dropped the torch on the oil, set the dragon alight, which caused the dragon to go into a rage and fly off to try to find somewhere to douse the flames. That is the beauty of tabletop in the sense that there's lots of impromptu moments that happen. And I love the fact that the mechanics of Baldur's Gate 3 allow for that type of flexibility where you could take stuff out of your inventory, chuck it at people, you can pick up an NPC in your barbarian rage and swing him around as a weapon and then, you know, not quite strong enough to throw him, but I can down a potion of hill dance strength. Now I'm strong enough to chuck him and then you throw him at the enemy. So many cool things happening here. Um, this is one of the really cool aspects of what um, Larian Studios is doing with Baldur's Gate 3. There's some more information in here about the subclasses for the Berserker. Um, uh, to, 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 yeah, Barbarians and Berserkers. Um, so yeah, there's lots of cool stuff in here about the Barbarians and Berserkers. I guess it's Barbarian. I may have said Berserker earlier, but it's just Barbarian that becomes a Berserker or Wild Heart, all these other cool things. Um, and there's just lots of good information here about what they did. There's also some video content as well. I would highly urge you to check this out. Again, I'm not sponsored by Larian Studios anyway. I just think what they're building is amazing. If you're looking for something that's going to give you that that D and D feel in a you know CRPG format, there have been some great games that have come out in the last couple of years. We've got um, Celasta Crown of the Magister, 10 out of 10. Pathfinder the Wrath of the Right Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, which despite being a bigger budget game, I gave a lower score than Celasta. I gave that one more like an eight out of a ten because I didn't like the the campaign stuff that you have to do. Um, those are two great games that take advantage of fifth edition D and D rules. Um, but I think that what Balerian Studios is building here with Baldur's Gate three is those type of games but on steroids it's so much more with it doing here i would urge you to check it out at the very least go check out all the new videos around patch 7 and uh, get your own information um see what you might want to play i i love the ranger uh, the druid are both really fun uh, the rogue was really fun um you know barbarian sounds like you know barbarian berserker sounds like it might be fun i don't know it's gonna be so much fun and the fact that you're gonna play this multiplayer with your friends i can't wait to sink my teeth into this with three of my friends and go through this live here on youtube so that'll be happening at some point love to know your thoughts do you also like Baldur's gate 3 are you in the early access what have you seen that you like dislike drop the comments down below and if we've gotten this far to the end of this video hopefully i've earned a like and a subscription don't forget to hit that bell icon so you get updates for future content and if you love tabletop and you like fantasy books and you like computer games and point and click games and all that good stuff check out the world of the weave and the Boyd weave in the void the weave in the void which is the world map behind me it is what i'm building with my wife and my brother it is a fifth edition tabletop setting with source book and campaign modules which are due out in q2 of 2022 you pre-order those over on the patreon page there's also a point and click adventure game like the old quest for glory and king's quest games you can download the free demo today you can also pre-order that over at our patreon page and there's a book series like dragonlance with chapter art from chris chapters come out twice a month chapter 12 was just published published last week Chapter 13 is coming out next week. Um, all of those are over at Patreon. You can get in for as little as $3 a month. It's a great way to support what I do here at the channel, as well as pre-order some really cool stuff if you want to go beyond just subscribing. So hopefully we'll see you over there as well. And don't forget, Discord's down below with our gaming community if you want to come hang out with us there. Stick around for all the cool stuff that comes later and happens here only on YouTube for my channel. Thanks, everybody, for your time. Hopefully I'll see you next time. Stay safe.